Good morning, Clear Branch kids. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And you may remember that this month we're talking about kindness. But true kindness is more than just being nice and polite to the people that we meet. Kindness means showing people how much you value them by the way that you act around them and the kind of words that you use. So last week, we heard three stories of how Jesus showed kindness to different people that he met during his ministry. This week, we're gonna rewind way back into the Old Testament to a story of a woman named Naomi. Now, we start with her. Naomi was married to a man named Elimelech, which is kind of hard to say, so we're just gonna call him E from here on out. Now, at the time that we pick up Naomi's story, God has already um, taken, taken the Israelites out of Egypt and after a long period of time, brought them to the Promised Land. But even after they were in their new home, which was wonderful, things weren't perfect. There were still times when there wasn't enough rain and there weren't enough crops to grow, and so there wasn't enough food. But E had heard that in a nearby land called Moab, there was plenty to eat. So he moved his wife, Naomi, and their two boys to Moab, and there their family grew. While they were living there, both of the sons met the women that they would marry and in turn got married. But before things could go too much further, something tragic happened and E and both the sons died, leaving Naomi and both daughters-in-law with no one to take care of them. So no, Naomi had heard though that back in her hometown of Bethlehem, there was plenty to eat. And so she started making plans to go back there. Now, it was the tradition of the time that if you had been married and your husband died, you would stay with his family. You would stay with his parents. Now, in this case, it was just Naomi. And so both girls started making plans to go back to Bethlehem with Naomi. But Naomi knew that they would both be happier if they stayed in their own homeland with the people that they had grown up with. And she encouraged them to do that. The first daughter decided that after a while that she would stay here in Moab where she'd grown up with her family. But the second daughter-in-law, whose name was Ruth, could not be persuaded to do that. And so after a while, Naomi realized how serious Ruth was about staying with her. And so the two of them made plans and made the long journey back to Bethlehem. Once they arrived there, of course, Naomi was amongst friends and family, and she told them what had happened, the tragedies of losing all of these men in their lives. And very quickly, Ruth then set to work taking care of the two of them. And she had heard that you could go to some local fields and follow along behind the workers as they gathered up the grain, and that they would leave some, and you were welcome to come in and gather that up so that you could take it home and feed your family if you needed to. So Ruth set to work immediately doing that. And as she's out there working, she worked for hours and hours and finally decided to take a break over in the shade. And as she was resting and having some water, the man who was in charge of all the workers, his name was Boaz, he saw her sitting there, knew he didn't know who she was, and so he asked about her. And after a little bit, he came, he approached her and he already knew Naomi because E had been a member of his family. And so he introduced himself to Ruth told him who he was and said, don't even go anywhere else. Just stay here always in my fields. I'll even tell the workers to make sure and leave extra grain for you and Naomi. I want you to be taken care of. And don't feel like you have to work nonstop. Take breaks and get all the water that you need or that you want. Well, Ruth was amazed because of course, she didn't know any of these people. And when she went home that day, she had so much grain, it was so easy to feed the two of them and she filled Naomi in and what had happened. And Naomi was so excited, but she wasn't surprised because she knew that Boaz was a member of her um, dead husband's family and was also kind of the family protector. And as time went on, things got even better. Ruth and Boaz actually fell in love and got married and they had a son together who then in turn grew up and had his own family, including a grandson whose name was David and would later become king and part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. That's a pretty cool set of circumstances. And I tell you that whole story to show you how kindness matters. First of all, Naomi showed kindness by not forcing her daughters-in-law to travel with her. She knew that they could be happier with their own family. And so she showed kindness by encouraging them to stay. Ruth though, showed kindness by 
insisting that she stay with Naomi because she would loved her and was concerned about her and knew that she would need someone to take care of her. And then she again showed kindness by working very hard to do whatever they needed to make sure that they had enough to eat. And then Boaz showed kindness by making sure that these two women um, could still work for what they needed, but that they would always have plenty. Guys, there are many ways throughout our lives that we can show kindness. And sometimes that's with strangers. Sometimes it's even easier when it's with strangers. But what this story shows us is that just like Ruth did, just like Naomi did, we need to show kindness most to the people who are closest to us, even when it can be tough. So let's follow their example this week, guys. Have a wonderful week.